Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left hand corner, we have the Phenom from StarCraft II Scarlet, who has made a. And actually, there's just. There's going to be random chat in this, by the way. This was part of their preparation. Bottom right hand corner, we have. In what color is that? It's like cream orange, I want to say. We have 80s Mullet. 80s Mullet, of course, streams regularly. He actually trained a lot with Cadenzi, who ended up going to Korea and doing a lot of practicing there. Cadenzi recommended him as a practice partner to Scarlet for her preparation versus Artosis. Artosis got slammed by Scarlet. Uh, not slammed, that's actually not fair. The games were actually close, intense, very good. But Scarlet did win decisively overall. But the real excitement here is, is that you have Scarlet, someone who has done extremely well in StarCraft II, started to do a bit of a foray into Brood War. And that kind of, I think everybody that was in the, start, in the Brood War community was like, yes, we're going to draw another one over again. Because, of course, there was the big shift from all the StarCraft II players into Brood War, and we're like wanting to move them back. Anyway, so all of the random <laughs> chatter right here is all in regards to, which you get to see the inside scoop, is all of the regards to uh, their, tr their practice, things like that. 80s Mullet actually is funny because he prepared with this for Tasteless and he was telling me that out of all of the games he like they played a ton of games together apparently and he's like I, I he, in his own recollection he's like I won like three I won like three uh, and that was it because Scarlet is a beast she is very very good at micromanagement she's opening up gateway first interior gateway kind of interesting positioning here usually you see gateway more out in the field or closer alongside the nexus we have 80s mullet going ahead and putting that barracks down also getting his refinery and he's going to use that little marine I, i'm a little concerned about this location for the marine run just because when you have two zealots this doesn't leave you i guess you can run back to the mineral line but it also allows the zealot to kind of run into the mineral line kind of in a direction he wants to go anyway and if the marine starts wandering down and out this way it, i don't know i'll let other terran comment on it this is on Fighting Spirit, by the way, SCV Scout moving to check out Scarlet's base. Scarlet putting down a cybernetics course, skipping the first Zealot, it looks like, altogether. So just opting to get quick range. Does have three probes on gas, so not going for any sort of early nexus. And it looks like Mullet is going to scout the upper right-hand base first. So we'll get Scout second. Still no Scout from Scarlet. And a first Marine has been produced with the supply depot actually kind of creating an additional odd blockade there. And there's the factory, perhaps feeling a little bit safer. Only one SCV on gas, so it looks like Mullet is thinking about a, probably a one factory into fast expansion build. Now checking that upper in corner. One critical thing though, with this, with the early Dragoon and that early Cybernetics Core upgrade is as though you lose that early Zealot pressure, which allows Terran to, you know, expand a little bit earlier. What you do gain oftentimes is the ability to kill that initial scout and put your opponent in the dark. Which, to be honest, sometimes happens anyway with that Zealot later Dragoon sort of action, but this lets you do it a lot earlier, which lets you be a little bit cheesier. cheesier. And as you can see, oh, 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 I take it back. I was gonna say that like almost got the perfect blockade there, but the SCV sliding through just because of a bit of positioning, that's Brood War. Uh, if the Dragoon had been positioned a little bit better, would have gotten a complete scout denial which would have allowed uh, some really rapid action. Actually, I feel like Aedes might be hurting himself. Ooh. Second Dragoon's gonna pop out, might actually do some, uh, actually no, Aedes is gonna be able to sneak out with that SCV in the meantime. He's already got two Marines in the bunker getting that command center plopped down, also has his barracks. He can do this safely because of all that scouting information. And he's also, I think, going to see uh, on the way out, switch that view. He's also got a good look at the Nexus, I think. Wish I could get like the retrospective what's in the field of vision. But yeah, I believe that SCV also saw that Nexus as it was making the exit. So knows that Scarlet's actually going for more of a defensive economic build to deal with Vulture is also getting the robotics facility. So very, this is very aggressive. So you have, you know, aggressive micromanagement, uh, aggressive micromanagement. You have aggressive, otherwise, be careful there, Scarlet. You have aggressive micro, aggressive macro. This is more the aggressive macro style of build going very, very thin on the gateways. So only a single gateway thus far, just now plopping down the second to get that ne that nexus down even earlier and pump out probes, etc. in the meantime. Also getting that robotics facility, the observer, just in case there's spider mines out. First tank on the front door. Mullet also playing a bit defensively. He is getting spider mines researched in the background and he is going to produce that single vulture. But with the two dragoons 
out in the front. If they spread themselves out, particularly towards the north, this vulture might not be able to sneak through. Range upgrade just finishing, now starting to do damage. The tank positioning a little bit, trying to push it back. One thing you have to be careful about is not getting that tank picked off, even with lower counts of Dragoons, because they're capable of doing that exact thing. And when you lose that early tank, that just opens so many things up for Protoss. Looks like the Vulture is going to be able to sneak out and around. Scarlet, I think, saw that. So it's actually, this is interesting, using the Observatory. So actually revealing a bit of tech. Dragoon needs to get back in position to block this Vulture off. Mullet using, so a bit of friendly fire, not friendly fire. Aggressive fire, friendly because they're friends, but going ahead and attacking that bunker to force Molt to repair to cast a little bit of resources, but that 12 o'clock base has been mined up, which is gonna... Uh, got the mine. Nice. That could, that was risky, because this is uphill mine firing, keep in mind. Uh, nope, that one's gonna blow up. Don't do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Walking up ramps into mines is not a good prospect, but is gonna get the uh, kill. And on top of that, I think Mullet realized between the observatory, between the lower gateway count between the Nexus, that Scarlet was going for more of an aggressive macro build. It was going to go for a quick Nexus Nexi over anything else. And so, kind of an interesting maneuver, it looks like, to, to, and I, I, should, I didn't say interesting, a brilliant maneuver to go up and delay the third Nexus as best as possible with that single Vulture sneaking out. The interesting maneuver is actually sneaking out with those tanks and those Marines to try to push those Dragoons. Very risky, but punishing Scarlet because she did not have additional Dragoons kind of guarding this front door. It's kind of a, a difficult thing to gauge, though, when you're in this situation taking three Nexus, uh, keeping a little bit lighter on the unit count and things along those lines, is the balance between units on the front to provide that harassment versus just straight economy. Mullet does have an opening here if he doesn't look like he's doing it. Um, he did have an opening there if he did some sort of aggressive attack to get something out. Sieging three tanks right on the front and just splattering the Dragoons. Now, here's the thing. Scarlet... Lose it, does not have map control, doesn't need it because she's going for the overall economic uh, stance here, but she's very light on Dragoons. Usually at this stage of the game, usually when you're looking at the seven minute mark, you're seeing a huge amount of Dragoons, but because of the lighter gateway count, because of I think what was a cut in Dragoons to get this early third Nexus, I'd have to go back and check. She's sitting with just three Dragoons, five Dragoons total, three at the base, two in the front, and those two are damaged. Observer is going to sneak in, get a good look at the factory count. Mullet isn't in a position to punish, though. Just now getting that weapons upgrade. Building additional command center himself somewhere on the map. I'll have to look. And he is starting to press forward a little bit. And he can do this, actually, because of Scarlet's lack of units. He can kind of be a little bit of a bully and press his way forward. Establishing this bridge so we can go ahead and take that 6 o'clock. Let's see if he plops down some additional factories after this command center when he has the resources to do so, but it looks like he's just going to kind of do a free float of the command center to the six. And I actually kind of like this on his part because he can afford to do so because, wow, Scarlet really pushing it here. So still just sitting on five Dragoons, looks like a single Vulture. Vulture's trying to do that mind trick where they can sneak out the front. These Dragoons, wow, going to get an opportunity because all of those shots, and this is that up that uh, hill advantage we can see just the dragoons cannot get the shots off to take that mine out but simultaneously taking that nine o'clock base and i don't think mullet is going to be aware of that maybe he has some idea of this just because of the sheer lack of army and tech that scarlet has fielded it's going to be critical that he gets some sort of scout to see that because this is him taking the third as scarlet's already going to have it's already halfway on the way to the fourth so scarlet is going to be able to maintain an overall long-term economic uh advantage because usually with Protoss, you want to be one base ahead, kind of generally. But here, you can see that even though Mullet has kind of been like the precautious going third base, whatnot, Scarlet has been right on top of it. And I, I love this sort of thing, using these pylons to create a blockade and the single Dragoon so the Vultures just can't run up, harass, and do whatnot. Mullet sneaking a Vulture up right-hand corner to go ahead and try to keep eyes there. Mullet adding two additional factories. Now the question here is, does he want to get aggressive? Does he want to play kind of that that timing, that one, kind of what you see is the, I guess at this stage it would be like the 2-1 weapons timing, although I think he might, did we already get level 1 weapons? We'll see. Um, I'm wondering if he's going to go for one of those timing pushes where you just plop down a bunch of factories once you establish your third, or if he's going to go for more of a long-term uh, game here, try to establish his fourth, play it that way. He's got to be concerned, because the thing is, a Scarlet with her APM, she's an absolute macro beast, and this is where she's transitioning. She's saying, you know what, I've got my four bases. I know Molt's going to stay on three for a while, so let me go ahead and plop down a bunch of gateways. Go ahead and tack up. Already has the Arbiter Tribunal uh, warping in right this second, so we're going to see Arbiters out in the field getting level one weapons. 
Vulture finally seeing this nine o'clock base. So Mullet needs to make some decisions here. Am I gonna be more aggressive? Am I gonna be more macro defensive? Um, <laughs> working on that poor cannon through the wall with that little bit of range. Let's see if the, the Dragoons are actually trying to move in, but you can see Scarlet actually has that her own Dragoon on hold position, and that is unfortunate. So not gonna be able to take care of that Vulture as quickly as she hoped. Still working out the kinks from Brood War to StarCraft II, as you can see. But Mullet has the six o'clock operational. Scarlet has good look, but he's just sitting on four factories and that's gonna be four factories versus, what is this in the background? Get the count, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine gateways in the background plus an Arbiter, plus everything else. Scarlet is going to be able to overwhelm him just from a pure economic standpoint, but that might be made up for, in the, and you can actually see the supply. This is what was scary in the games with Artosis as well, is Scarlet sometimes would end up falling behind in the early game, but then as a follow-up would just have beastly macro and just would suddenly jump like 50 supply really just on top of it. And her micromanagement, even in the shift from StarCraft II to Brood War, her micromanagement, her ability to utilize her APM efficiently was scary, scary good. And so I'm actually hoping to see her more in the field of StarCraft II. Trying to establish that upper right-hand corner, looks like she's moving out of probe to do so. So this, and this actually is uh, more where I'd want to see Scarlet in the face here and not giving any additional ground to Mullet. Maybe pecking at things, maybe doing drops, maybe being a little bit more aggressive. This is course newbie diggity talking and honestly scarlet's probably always going to be we'll see maybe one day i will come and be the beast uh, starcraft player but my guess is for the near future scarlet's going to be much much better at this game than i am she's plopping that nexus in that upper right hand corner mostly sticking to looks like a handful of zealots but primarily a very heavy gateway force just dragoons just zealots and that's going to play a little bit into Mullet's favor because he's got a whole lot of units that are good at dealing with exactly that, which is siege tanks. A huge amount of siege tanks and perhaps some vultures to follow that up. He's plopped on some additional factories, so he's now sitting at nine factories himself. Scarlet's gone, gone ahead and got up to that 12 gateway. So both players playing a very defensive macroeconomic game, just going straight to the late game. Level one armor and shields working for Scarlet. And I think what I think when we will actually see a break in the action is when Mullet does hit that level two weapons, level one armor. That's been the popular thing to do. He's somewhat delayed because I think that usually if you're hitting it perfectly, if I recall from all the StarCraft watching, usually you're hitting it around the, like 1230 to 1330, somewhere around there. And I think he's going to hit this closer to the 15 minute mark. And at the 15 minute mark, I'm honestly expecting Scarlet to be closer to Max. So we'll see if he does it that direction or if he waits for just the pure Max army. Because that's the other thing Terran will do is, is they will just get their units up. They'll wait for the Max army and go from there. But I feel like Scarlet's built well into dealing with that as well. She's a little bit light on the tier two tech units, but she has a sizable army. She has enough reinforcements to just keep reflooding units across the map. Her macro is Beasley. She's already maxed out, is actually 40 supply up on Mullet and has to be thinking and has actually established practically every base out here, has control of them all. I almost feel like this is a little bit early to take. And that's kind of an interesting thought about Brood War that I haven't thought about before. Is there a disadvantage in taking a base too early? At which point you're just kind of exposing your resources and actually even positioning to deny the three to mullet and maybe take it <clears throat> herself down the line. But I'm almost wondering if it's worthwhile to just only put a pylon or something down here or maybe even cannons, but not build the Nexus or any additional Whatnot, because when you have this is too many bases to be mining. That's too that would be too much supply. Yeah, this is actually a problem. I just realized is that's 70 supply and probes, which I think might be too much. Protoss players, let me know what you think. Um, but at a certain point, you have too many minerals and you don't have enough ground force. And in particular against Terran, that can hurt you, especially with the level two weapons upgrade just clicking in a level two armor. It looks like. Mullet is mulling around to do so. 14 minute mark, actually. So not too far behind the point you usually see this sort of push at. Uh, about, I don't know, 30 seconds behind where I've seen it just pure optimal. Psystorm is just being upgraded for Scarlet. I think this Arbiter does, I'm hoping this Arbiter has stasis upgraded, does have a sizable amount of energy. But we also have a science vessel to help deal against that Arbiter if it just stays kind of over that army line. Going to catch a couple of these probes, which is actually funny because, oh, nope, Scarlet immediately moving the back. I was about to say that might be advantageous to free up some supply for Scarlet. But yeah, this is my concern. Even though Scarlet has a lot of production, I feel like so much of her supply is caught up in probes that she might just end up getting wiped out overall. Um, we'll see. Anyway, 
Siege tanks. Vultures cutting the map in half this way. Scarlet actually looking for a flank is going to try to move around the other direction, which might end up in a base trade situation, which be, would be advantageous for her. So Protoss trading bases with Terran in the late game is actually sometimes a scenario you want to get into. So she's sneaking around. Still some siege tanks down below, splotting the Arbiter moving away from that turret while the Dragoons and everything else clear it. So actually... Yeah, actually able to get right on top of this back siege tank line, and I think she's going to catch Mullet out of position. Sliding in. Arbiter forward. Does the Arbiter have stasis? Does have stasis. Getting a good stasis across a lot of tanks right there. But I don't see any reinforcements coming across the map for Scarlet right at this stage. The Arbiter is not providing cloak right this second. And it looks like a lot of the units also backing up. It looks like she wants to back off with this army. He's going to lose portions of, his, of her army. In the meantime, as she's moving in to defend the three. And let's see if she just feels like she can out macro resupply. Arbiter is now once again back overhead. And I feel like this is still early game Scarlet is what I'm going to say. I think you can still see a little bit of the rough army movement on her part. She's still figuring it all up. Queuing up 15 Zealot. 10, down to 10 now. She had a bunch of Zealots queued. And you can see this is where she's just trying to push that macro in the background. But it... But again, with just the huge probe count, a little bit of uh, delay, not having that large army to just engage this, I feel like what Mullet is going to have is a superior ground army with his maxed army. And Terran units tend to be, especially with the level 2 weapon upgrade like this, tend to be a little bit beefier, not a little bit, sizably beefier than their Protoss counterparts. Although Scarlet does have level 2 weapons and level 1 armor herself. So Mullet shifting back around, some Zealots look like they're trying to sneak back underneath now doing a pincer maneuver coming from two directions, catching a single siege tank from that direction. So the Zealot's returning back to home base, and Mullet's in a bit of a conundrum. He wants to move with a huge death ball across the map, and I love what Scarlet do is doing here. With reinforcement, with this grouping here, she's kind of pushing this edge, and with this grouping here, she's threatening a counterattack from the rear. But Mullet's going to cut the Gordian Knot and just head straight towards her main. Straight towards the main. And use a handful of vultures, it looks like a handful of dragoons, to kind of push against that army in that back corner. So now, plus an EMP, that was huge, across the Arbiter, catching a lot of the shields of the dragoons. Usually you want zealot shielding for these dragoons, and this is a huge amount of siege tanks and vultures pushing into this natural expansion. And we'll see if there's enough reinforcements to clear this up, or if that army can swing back around. Um, looks like that army's backing up to maybe go for a counter pincer attack, but I don't know that'll be enough. Now what Scarlet really needs to do, it looks like she's already done so is, yeah, start playing Gorilla Toss. Start expanding absolutely everywhere. Try to catch your opponent when he's out of position. This is a huge amount of gateways, though. It looks like a single seat wild. I like this maneuver from Mullet. Splitting off four siege tanks against these probes. Only the probes to defend uh, at that position. And just while he dives into the natural, Scarlet trying to... So let's get a good gateway count. We got, what is it, four, five, six, seven. Seven gateways there. Plus all the gateways here. Let's see, that's just uh, tanks, though. Uh, or, I'm sorry, that's just cannons here in the meantime. Getting, ooh, catching the High Templar. Looks like mines right on top of the gateways. Probes flooding out. Zealots moving in to try to take care of those siege tanks at 12. But Mullet is going to be able to wipe out this natural expansion. He's moving in with reinforcements. More vultures coming through. And they should be able to sweep up this counterattack force. And actually, if he also gets... It's kind of like the double choke sort of thing. If he manages to establish the position in the upper right-hand corner, he will have both reinforcement points cut off. And I think these, this grouping of siege tanks and vultures will be able to get the job done. Yeah, he's moving up into that right-hand corner. So now he has a bunch of mines here. Some side storm coming from cliffside edge, but that's still a lot of siege tanks to make the way through. And Molt's saying, you know what? You go ahead and we'll just let this do what it's going to do. I'll leave these siege tanks here while I wipe everything out. And this... I gotta say, this is for, this is Mullet showing his experience and having to deal with Future, because Future would do this to him all day long in their rivalry. So a bit of kind of the the mentor tutor tutor passing it on teacher sort of thing. Mullet also sweeping into the three o'clock base, and he is doing some work here. He is pushing bases everywhere, and this is where Scarlet needs a recall or something like that. She is pushing in, trying to clean up this attack force that's sitting. At the main, vultures are coming in to reinforce, but it looks like a lot of these siege tanks are going to get taken out because the science vessel was just out of position, and unfortunately just in such a way where the zealots could get directly on top of the tanks before they could really fire. But it, we'll see if it's too little too late because the 3 o'clock base is getting wiped out from Scarlet. Mullet trying to sweep in. Is he going to have a ramp to get up? There's a single zealot and a bunch of cannons blocking right there, so I think that is going to be pushed back. But Scarlet has opened up the front door. She's still sitting on a superior... So keep in mind... She's got a bunch of probes gone, which is okay. She's got a sizable bank to sit behind that. 
uh, she has lost this upper right hand base, but overall she still has the 12 o'clock. She's still mining here. Lost mining at three, Molt's taking that over, but still mining out of four bases versus essentially Molt's three. His mine, his mine, his main is wiped out. Heard a mine go off, which is my, why my brain went there. Observer's going to see that taken up, but the critical thing is Scarlet has managed to sneak back out on the map. Does have some work to do here. Upper right hand corner, but has gateways, honestly, and other reinforcement units to maybe sneak out. Looks like she's trying to turn around and maybe get a contain on Mullet on the front to prevent those vultures from sneaking out. Is going to be pushed back and dissuaded from doing that. Arbiter here. Are we going to see a recall? There's a recall right on top of the tanks. What a beautiful recall. But simultaneously, we see a Dark Templar trying to deal with some, some vultures and the Mullet trying to move up right there. But this is going to be a critical base trade. This is, yeah, and this is how you win games late game versus Terran with this refugee style where you just, or people call it guerrilla, but basically you get some unit production out there in the field. You disrupt the Terran army. Wow, that stasis catching all of those vultures on that side. So there's going to be no defense. Plus these SCVs are going to get wiped out. And I think Mullet might just, yeah, <laughs> there's the frowny face. Calls the GG there. Oof, great play from Scarlet. It looked like she was in danger, but... Yeah, using guerrilla tactics, able to sneak right back into this match. Great play from both players. Great game from both. When Scarlet streams, check her out. She hasn't streamed in a while, which is unfortunate. I really want to see her streaming sometime out and streaming Brood War. So hopefully if you guys send her enough messages, we'll sneak a bit of that. I think she secretly likes Star uh, Brood War a lot in some of her comments, but I'm not sure that she's allowed to say <laughs> that she likes Brood War more than StarCraft 2. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thanks for listening. Uh, be sure to check out 80s Mullet as well. Oftentimes when he's streaming, uh, particularly over lunch times, that's where I'm hanging out in his chat. And if you like the Nesh versus Machine game, both of those guys are oftentimes uh, doing King of the Hills and whatnot with 80s Mullet. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>